Hey friends and welcome to another handyman clearance vlog video tutorial whatever you may want to call it so in this video I am redoing my stairs well not redoing them I'm giving them a little bit of a facelift because they look tired honey okay so we're gonna take them from tired to refurbished fresh and clean and new that white paint gave it an, a much needed facelift so we're gonna talk the, the details on how I achieved this look so we're gonna jump straight into the video So of course, before I go any further, if you are new to our channel, welcome. Hey sis, how you doing? Hope you are being blessed and safe as always. If you are new, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the like button as well. And don't forget to hit the bell to get those notifications whenever we post. To all of my returning subscribers, hey bestie. Hope you are being safe and blessed as always. So right now I am sanding down these raggedy tired stairs and I mean, they needed a much needed revamp. Okay, don't look at that booty. That booty look good, don't it? I'm sorry. So anyways, the stairs, I'm sanding them down. I think I went in with a medium grit sandpaper. I bought this little sander off from Walmart. I think it was like $15, $20. Sanders are very inexpensive. So this was not an expensive like remodel or, or anything like that. All I really did was paint these suckers and buy a rug. Like at the end of the day, that's really all I did. But it was some back breaking work because trying to work on stairs is a very awkward position to be put in. So I did have to be on my knees a lot. So definitely invest in some knee pads. So I'm vacuuming it all up. I could have used my little shop vac, but I used my Dyson because I feel like my Dyson just gives me the suction that I need. And we're just gonna make sure we dust away all of the dust. And then now I'm going in with some wood filler to fill in all the potholes. Um, these are the original steps that came with the house. So they are not pretty, okay? They didn't use no nice finished wood to, to do these because they were previously covered with carpet when we bought the house. She decided to remove the carpet and just left these exposed stairs, which was fine because it kind of went with the previous floor, but now our floors are gray and everything in the house is pretty much like gray and blue. So I kind of wanted to play off of those tones and you know, update the floors. There's nothing really in my house that has this natural wood other than my counters and my dining room table. The floors are pretty much all gray. So after I fill in everything with the wood filler, I scrape off the excess. I go back over with my sander and it makes sure I have a nice smooth surface and I make sure I check and I got all of those nail holes filled, any kind of dents that was going on. I try to fill those. Um, and I also nailed down any exposed nails because like I said, these, these stairs weren't pretty. So I did have to go in and kind of like nail in some nails that was kind of like sticking out from, you know. So this is like a close up, as you can see, I filled in most of what I could see. It was really hard to kind of see those holes, but once I started painting everything white, I could like really see it. But anyway, so we're gonna talk about the paint now. So I went in with a pure white by Sherwin-Williams, as y'all know, I love me some Sherwin-Williams paint. And I went in with the Pro Classic, the satin finish. Um, you definitely could have went glossy with the steps. I'm not saying that was it, but I, I don't really do glossy. I don't, I don't really mess with glossy, not even with my trim. I usually do like a satin. Um, so yeah, it gives it like a little soft sheen, nothing too overpowering. And I went in with a foam roller and just, you know, coated. I did, three coats I did three coats um, I definitely should have primed I should have primed these steps before I went in with the white uh, but I was being lazy and I just decided to go in with a regular the regular paint and this is like the trim paint and there's a boo she called herself trying to be helpful um, she wasn't but you know so now you see all of these like you know I'm giving y'all up close and personal you see all these cracks and stuff Honey, we, we about to fill those in to give it a finished look. So of course I'm, I'm about to give y'all my tool spotlight. I gotta give y'all my tool spotlight for this video. And this one is definitely gonna be the the putty, the um, caulking, the, the filler, the white stuff that you, like I don't know what it is about caulking, but it is your best friend for any kind of home project, okay? If you feel like you made a mistake, something ain't looking right, get you some caulking and you'll look like a pro came up in there, I promise you. Now lay it correctly, don't be globbing it on there. You definitely gotta be, you know, a little cautious what you're doing, all right? But I love caulking, all right? I throw me on some gloves, get me a little bucket of water to help with cleaning up. So if you do make a mistake, all you gotta do is get you some water and clean it up real quick. 
and I bought two tubes of this. Like everything looks seamless now. It looks all well put together. I like caulking. Caulking is your best friend. I promise you it is. Get you some caulking. So I gave the caulk in about maybe an hour or two to dry. It doesn't take long for it to dry. Um, so then we're gonna go in with a top coke, top coke, oh Lord, top coat. So I bought this one coat polyurethane and um, it says one coat. Honey, do two, hell, do three if you really like, cause there's never, a, there's no such thing as a one coat polyurethane, I'm sorry, you, and these are steps. People are gonna be walking on them. My kids like to play on them. People be falling and tripping down the steps. Make sure they're durable so that, you know, somebody step on it and they lift their foot, they, you know, the paint ain't coming up off the steps on their foot and then track in paint throughout your house and then I have to kill somebody. So I went in using a, uh, a uh, stain sponge, a sponge stain. It's pretty much a sponge with a terry cloth wrapped around it. And I globbed, I mean globbed that coating on there. Once I am done globbing all this polyurethane onto my steps, I give it 24 hours to dry. I doubt it because I'm very impatient. I probably didn't give it 24 hours to dry. I think I just like waited for it was till it was dry to touch. You should definitely give it 24 hours to let it cure, but I'm an impatient woman. So after that, or I'll, as I'm waiting for it to dry, I install a stair nose at the top of the steps and that's just the transition piece from the stairs to the floor. I have towel on the top of the steps cause that's the kitchen area. Um, so I installed like a gray piece that matches the gray laminate. Um, and it doesn't look bad. So, you know, I thought it was a nice little transition from the laminate flooring, from the white stairs to the gray tile. B what was there before was this tacky silver piece. And you know, I don't do tacky, honey. <laughs> no, ma'am. I took some tough as nails glue and glued down my transition piece. Nothing, you know, too crazy because I didn't feel like nailing it down. And then you're supposed to give that another 24 hours to cure, but y'all know I'm an impatient woman. I did not do that. Then I'm taking some blue painter's tape and I'm just marking where the center of my rug is supposed to be. So that, or this is supposed to be the edge. This is where I make sure I stay in the middle of the stairs because we don't want no rug doing the gangsta lean on the steps looking all crooked yeah I, I don't do that i don't do that anyway so this is the rug that we are going to be installing i purchased it off of wayfair i'll leave the link down below in the description box for you guys matter of fact everything all of my tools and everything will be listed in the description box and if you want to purchase it there will be a link for you to be able to purchase those items so this came from where wayfair it is a two feet by three inches and it's 10 feet long I'm hoping this is long enough because I really had no clue what like went to get. Um, and then I realized that my stairs at tops, because I'm doing two sets, my stairs at the second level, they're they're longer than these steps here. So we're gonna see how the bottom steps go. Um, so I'm gonna get my fabric scissors and I'm gonna just cut this off. So yeah, yes, yes, yes. I'm ready, I'm ready to finish this project. I am ready to finish this project. Now I'm going in with some uh, carpet tape. Uh, this is going to help secure my rug to the stairs so I don't have a bunch of slipping and sliding going on. These are supposed to be sturdy stairs, not a slip and slide. So invest in the carpet tape. And I will say this carpet tape is A1. I'm about to use this with one of my area rugs in the house. I did not realize carpet tape was a thing until this project. So I'm just peeling off the tape and I have my handy dandy staple gun. And of course she is hooked up to my bestie, my air pressure tank, because me and her, we be getting shit done, okay? So I'm just stapling it and I make sure I stay on the edges of the rug because I mean, why would you wanna put staples in the middle of the rug where more than likely somebody's gonna be stepping? I have children who love to run around like Flintstone feet. Okay, and I don't need them coming to me with a staple hanging out of their big toe. So do it on the edge of the steps where no one is more than likely going to be stepping. Um, I'm hoping that my kids will understand logic and be walking down the middle of the step instead of the freaking edge. But <laughs> I have I have children, so you know. 
Like we're gonna fast forward through all this. This is pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy. If you do have a staple that doesn't wanna play nice, just get you a hammer and hammer that sucker in, you know, back in the olden days when, you know, cavemen ruled the world. And you're, I mean, it's easy, so easy. You're pretty much done after this. At least I thought I was, but I ended up hating how this rug turned out. All right, so I just got done laying down the rug runner and um, I fucking hate it. I hate it. I went back on Wayfair and ordered some similar ones. It's, it's really the pattern that I hate the most about it. And I also hate that I won't be able to finish it because the rugs won't come in um, until a week from now. Um, I guess I'll show y'all what it looks like, why I hate it, so. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> if I stand over it, you can really see what I'm talking about. Cause I'm pretty sure somebody's pretty much like, I think you're overreacting. So this is what I'm looking like, looking at from above. And as you can see, this is very inconsistent patterns. Like this just looks janky as fuck. Not what I was going for. It probably doesn't look, it probably doesn't look that bad. It probably doesn't, it looks bad. It looks really bad do love like the quality of this rug it's awesome if i had somewhere else to put a fuck rug runner i would definitely put this somewhere else in my house but i don't so i guess i'll be giving away a rug runner anybody who wants one i have a second one that is still packaged up you can have it because i can't do nothing with it i'm about to throw this one away because i already done cut it and you know all kind of other shit but yeah, I don't, I don't like this pattern. This is terrible. I really thought I was gonna be finished with this. All right, so after I was done throwing my hissy fit and having a whole entire mental breakdown over a freaking rug runner, don't judge me, okay? I'm a perfectionist and I don't like it when my shit don't go the way I want it to. So hubby, of course, came in to save the day and pulled up the previous horrifying rug runner and the new one came in so that's super exciting and i went ahead and installed it i didn't re-record me installing it of course because we've already gone through that we don't need to go through it a second time it's already heartbreaking enough so here is the final reveal on everything that looks so good now All right, so tip, if you do get a rug runner for your stairs, make sure it's just like all one pattern. You don't have like the stripe mess that I had going on. Otherwise you'll end up with the hot mess that I had going on. So this one is pretty much the same. It's just a different pattern. It's by the same company. I purchased it off of Wayfair. All that good stuff will be in the description box as mentioned before. I added a few little pumpkins to kind of be a little, you know, festive because we're in the middle of fall right now. You know, it's spooky season. So yes, this is it. So I'm going to show you the upstairs. Now downstairs was Instagram. Upstairs is um, a reality, okay? Because this is what my stairs look like when I didn't clean them. Um, these were definitely a lot uh, worse than uh, the stairs at the bottom level um, these had all kind of stuff hanging out of them and as you can see I did not remove all of it because I got lazy so I'm just giving you like a up close and personal what my stairs look like like a full-on investigation but stop being nosy okay because ain't nobody gonna be on my steps investigating it with a flashlight like I am so from afar they look like a masterpiece and that, that's all that matters, all right? That's all that, don't pay no attention to the blue tape either, all right? The paint was still drying. But anyways, thank you guys for joining us on another Handyman Clarence tutorial. We will see y'all in another one. Be blessed and be safe.